Let us now start with phasers, one of the most interesting and the most important topics. First of all, what is meant by a phaser? It is a rotating vector. We know what is a vector, right? Vector is something which has a magnitude and a direction. Now, what is a rotating vector? If this vector here, it is rotating. So, that means it is going like this. The position of the vector is changing. Then it is called a rotating vector, which is nothing but a phasor. Okay. So, rotating means what? Let us say at time t is equal to t1. It is in this position. After a certain point of time, it will be in another position. It will travel some distance theta and it will be in another position. Okay. So, in this way, it will keep rotating around its around this point. Now, why do we need this for our analysis? The sinusoidal components that we have just discussed, we will be representing the sinusoidal functions in terms of phasors. Sinusoidal functions in terms of phasors. And why we do this? This is for easier mathematical analysis. Okay. For example, if you take a sine function, some 2 sine 5t. Okay. And there is another function 5 sine 5t plus 30 degrees. That means there is a phase, initial phase of 30 degrees. Now imagine adding both of these. Let us say this is v1 of t and this is v2 of t. Now we have to add each of them. That means there is a circuit element through which the voltage is V1 and another circuit element through which the voltage is V2. Now we want the total voltage across both of them. So we'll have to add, right? So V of T is equal to V1 plus V2. Now imagine adding these both. It is going to be difficult. You will have to use a lot of trigonometric identities and trigonometric formulae, right? But if you can represent in terms of phasors, then it will become very easy because then we can use the vector loss of addition. We can use, make use of vector loss of addition to do the mathematical analysis on sinusoidal components. We will now see how to represent, okay? How to represent a sinusoid in terms of phasor. For this, we will take a generalized sinusoidal expression, okay? So, what is the generalized sinusoidal expression? V of t is equal to Vm sin omega t plus phi, okay? So, this is in time domain. Now, this if you want in the, in terms of phasor, then you will write the magnitude, the maximum value of sin, sin, that we will write first, that will become the magnitude of the phasor and what will be the angle, it will be phi. As simple as that, this is the phasor representation. So that means if you take a x, y axis, okay? So then uh, we need a vector which is having a magnitude Vm, okay? At an angle phi. So this is phi and this magnitude is Vm. Now here this magnitude, this should always be positive, okay? And this, this is called as the magnitude of the phasor and this is called as the phase of the phasor, okay? So in order to, sometimes what you will have, you will have a negative magnitude. In that case, you have to make proper changes so that it will get reflected in the phase. We do a few problems, then it will become clear to you. And this phasor we write as V bar. See that in time domain we use the small letter as a function of time. But here we have we use a big letter. Okay. So remember phasor we usually write big letters, capital letters. Another way of writing is, so these are all different things that you need to remember when you are representing in terms of phasor. Okay. So we here we wrote the maximum value of the sign and the phase is the initial phase. Okay, 
but another way that we can write is by using the rms value okay so this is using the maximum value maximum value as the magnitude so we can also write as vm by root 2 angle 5 so this is using the rms value both of them are correct if nothing is mentioned then you have to go ahead with the rms value okay now whenever you are representing in terms of the phasor you need to remember two very important points the first point is that the frequency should be same why is that the case if you take sin 5t here what will be the phasor form magnitude is 1 angle is 0 degrees nothing is being said about the frequency now if you take since it is 0 the vector will have 0 angle now it will keep rotating right next if you take sin 70 this is also one angle 0 degrees right and here also it will be the same thing okay so now after time t1 after time t1 this will cover an angle theta 1 in the same time it is going to cover an angle theta 2 which is greater than theta 1 at t1 why is that the case because you can see that the frequency is more here here omega is 7 here omega is 5 so frequency is more means it has more speed it will complete the cycles faster so it will complete more angle in the same amount of time so initially the phase difference there was no phase difference but after a while there is more phase difference because the phase difference new phase difference will now be theta 2 minus theta 1 so initially if you take at t is equal to 0 the phasor will be like this so you can directly add and you will get two angle 0 degrees but after a time the first phasor will be like this and the second phasor will be like this now addition is going to be like this right so but this is not what we want so that is why whenever you are expressing something in terms of the phasor form ensure that they have the same frequency if they don't have the same frequency don't use the vector loss of addition next another important point is you have to take care whether it is sine or cosine okay so that means let us say v1 of t is equal to 2 sine 5t and v2 is given as 1 cos 5t okay so you should not write it as this is sorry 2 angle 0 and this has one angle zero this is wrong so why is that the case because here you have sine and here you have cos whenever you're writing in the form of sine ensure that all of them are either in sine or they are all in cos okay so here if we convert v2 in terms of sine then what will you get v2 is equal to 1 sine 5t plus 90 degrees okay so sine 90 plus theta is what sine 90 plus theta so if you don't remember the conversion whenever there is 90 then the sine will become cos if there is cos it will become sine so here you will get cos now cos theta now whether it is positive or negative you have to see from here here all the functions will be positive here only sine will be positive here only tan and here only cos will be positive so now 90 plus theta will lie in the second quadrant in the second quadrant sine is positive so here we take the positive sign okay so uh, that's how you're getting sine uh, cos 5t is equal to sine 5t plus 90 okay so then what will be the phasor the new phasor is one angle 90 degrees so this is the correct expression so now the phasor we have represented in terms of the magnitude and the phase okay but there is another form of representation this is magnitude phase representation what is the other form the rectangular form of representation so in this what will happen there will be a real part plus an imaginary part okay so this you can understand if you consider the graph 
So, what we have taken? We have taken the vector to have magnitude Vm and the phase phi. Now, what is the x axis? It will be the real part and this will be the imaginary part. So, if you drop a perpendicular onto the real axis, then what will be this function? Vm cos phi from trigonometry, right? Cos phi is equal to this by this. So, this you will get as Vm cos phi. Similarly, what about this? Vm sin phi. Okay. So, the imaginary part magnitude will be Vm cos phi and the, re and the sorry, real part magnitude is Vm cos phi and imaginary part magnitude is Vm sin phi. So, this uh, phasor you can write as Vm cos phi plus j times Vm sin phi. So, this is from phasor to rectangular form. That means you know the phasor form then how to get the rectangular form. Another way that you need to know is if you know the rectangular form, then how to get the phasor form. Sorry, this is not phasor. This is magnitude and phase form. Magnitude plus phase form. Rectangular form to magnitude and phase how to get now. Okay. So, that means you have A plus J B let us say. Then how will you get the magnitude? Magnitude is given by root over a square plus b square and angle is given by tan inverse b by a. This is because the real part you can write here, imaginary part will be the vertical line. So, the hypotenuse is what? a square plus b square and what will be this angle theta? Tan inverse this uh, height divided by the base. Okay. We need to know the representation in both the forms because for addition, we can use this form, the real part and imaginary part will be easier for vector addition and for multiplication and division, the magnitude and phase representation will be an easier form to use.